right, hello, welcome. This video is a tour of our new Communities app. Uh, the Communities app is a peer-to-peer -peer collaboration app that is specifically created to share content with a community through posts and comments. Uh, new group activity can appear in a feed uh, and uh, you can direct, also direct message with other peers uh, and uh, not only individuals, but also groups of peers uh, within a community. So soon, anyone will be able to use the Communities app by going through their web browser uh, to a URL that is actually hosted by a crowdsourced set of cloud hosts, uh, holo hosts that are serving this application uh, distributed through the distributed web. So uh, Lauren, I would love to ask you, uh, since you did so much of the work on this, uh, this migration that we've got, had once this acquisition of Hilo went through, uh, a little bit of a brief explanation of, of kind of how this went from a client server application to, to now a distributed application. It was both new territory and, and also went in a lot of ways a lot smoother than, than anticipated uh, and quicker. Um, we went from a node backend uh, server, it's very conventional server, sort of GraphQL server setup, um, to putting in its place, running Holochain conductors, delivering data from DNAs um, to our UI through a newly built GraphQL interface that was moved into the UI layer itself. Um, that process um, was, was pretty elucidating to how to take take any app like this and move it into uh, move it onto Holochain, uh, as well as how to structure a DNA um, to support sort of conventionally structured data in like something like a social network. But it all it all went fairly smoothly, um, and you know there were still we're still adapting some pieces. But what's here right now is is exciting. Yeah, yeah. What's exciting to me about that migration is that um, now this app basically has all of these peers that are acting together to provide all of what a centralized server used to provide for them. Um, and so now there's no central point of failure uh, for the application. Pretty cool. Um, so I, I do want to reiterate, um, just for those that are, are doing the testing with us in closed alpha, we are in closed alpha right now. Um, and so we're extremely excited to open up our closed alpha testing outside of our organizational boundaries and get our Holoport owners and other Holochain users testing with us. Um, as I said, soon that's going to be everyone uh, through Holo hosting. But I want to I want to be sure people that are using this have the right expectations. In closed alpha, we're going to be upgrading versions as we get feedback, as we get bug reports, um, and, and want to do new feature improvements. And we've got some in mind. Uh, but with that, right now, the data that is being stored across all these peers, we can't rely on it persisting from version to version. In fact, it, we expect it to go away. So any of the data that you put in here, just make sure you understand that this is data that will eventually disappear. Um, that, that's not going to be the case forever. We will have migrations of data and future versions of Holochain and, and apps in Holochain. We are continuing to test at larger and larger scales. We want to be able to test this uh, soon with thousands of users. And so that's where we're heading right now. Um, we really value your feedback. We value your bug reports. We expect there to be problems. We expect to change and improve. Um, this is a continuous learning and uh, continuous improvement exercise for our organization. And Jameson, I would just, I would just insert in there, I think it's worth noting that uh, our current test suites do test in a virtualized sense against hundreds of nodes. Um, of which we're still finding some things to work with, but um, but there's a real stress testing is happening there. And what'll be really interesting about this is uh, the, the ability to have like a user experience across hundreds of peers and be able to get a more, um, I guess the softer side of that testing, um, you know, is, is there parts and ways in which interacting with the UI is showing up issues in the Holochain that we wish to optimize or otherwise um, giving us information about, about how Holochain operates. Um, yeah. Which, cause it's, it's, it's a fairly organic uh, set of, set of algorithms and paradigms that it does kind of take real human interaction on top of to, to understand um, where to go from here, so. Agreed. And speaking about that human interaction, how about we give everybody a little taste of uh, what using the community's app looks like. On my screen here, I've got uh, the opening screen 
Uh, now, Lauren, uh, when will we see the registration screen and when won't we? So you're going to see the registration screen the first time you come in as a Holochain user, uh, as a Holochain agent. Um, and you're at that point, as you'll see momentarily, going to enter your name and an avatar URL and register that agent. As soon as you've registered that agent, you're going to forevermore be registered as that agent. So in, in the community tab. Um, so every time you come back to the community tab as that agent, you're going to just, you're not, you're no longer going to be given a registration screen. Gotcha. And now one thing, one thing I love that you did here is you created a way to quickly, uh, just randomly choose, uh, just random avatars. Um, yeah, that's super helpful for testing. I'll say, um, as long as while the data is not migrating across versions, we're doing a lot of jump in and test, um, and play around and so it's helpful to not um, have to have to go and pick your avatar each time definitely now i've actually got an avatar of myself and i'll paste in a, a url there so this is not a randomly generated one this is actually a picture of me um, and i'm going to register i'm going to go ahead and check, pick a random one okay let's both create posts shall we sure I'll create a post. Okay, so how about this communities app? Okay. <laughs> so I'll create that post. And while you're creating your post, I'm, I'm also gonna uh, head back to the, the main feed screen here. Um, and in my feed, I can now see my post that I created. Um, I've also got a few other things. Uh, and here I've got a, a button that allows me to uh, switch between multiple communities. Uh huh. Now, currently, these are pre populated communities that we have decided on uh, because we want to funnel communication around uh, different topics that we want for feedback, that we want to monitor and, um, and, and gather uh, just different types of community interaction with. Um, yeah. Eventually, uh, we will allow the communities to create their own uh, new communities. Oh, I just saw a feed uh, post come in. Let me see what comes along in my feed. Sample post might be interesting. <laughs> I am definitely going to comment on that. No, it's really hard to think of fun things to post or say in a demo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's my comment on on Lauren's post. I love that. So uh, in addition to the posts and the comments, uh, I'd like to go in and, and show off the direct messaging uh, feature as well. Would you like to join me in direct message? Yeah, let's do that. Great. I already see you popped up in my contacts. I will create a uninteresting message. So there it is showing in my feed. Yeah, so right now, um, we're still working on improving performance. Uh, we've come a long way. There's still more to go. Uh, and this is a fully distributed application. And so it, uh, getting everything synced up in a eventually consistent way uh, between multiple peers is uh, part of the fun challenge that we have as an organization um, and we've done a really good job of um, climbing climbing that learning curve already I would say oh there we go also, peers can operate asynchronously, so sometimes a message may come through later. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right. right, so that shows off the primary feature set. Uh, again, we've got uh, multiple communities. Uh, we have uh, posts and comments within each of those communities. And then we've got direct messages uh, that we can have not only with individuals, but also uh, with groups of individuals. Mm -hmm. That's right. Am yeah, I missing anything? Message threads. Uh, no, I think at the at the top level, that's where we're at right now. Um, we didn't really demo 
moving between multiple communities. The communities currently in this app will operate somewhat like channels, um, I would imagine. Um, but yes, that's that's the only thing we haven't really. It's the interaction is not going to be a whole very interesting with two peers, but yeah. yeah. And and I know that we've we've really focused down the scope of what we wanted to do in this first MVP. Um, uh, would you like to talk about a couple of the different features that we've got in store coming up soon? Yeah, the the scope of the of the client server app that this this has come from um, that Holo's acquired Hilo originally um, had a fair amount more features than what are represented in the Holo chain adaptation. Um, we can bring across a lot more of those features. Probably some of them we never will, um, but there's a couple that we probably will in the short term, and then we're going to be really interested in what um, is discovered as people come online, as whole port owners come online here, um, and there's actual interactions I think we'll see and we'll get some direct feedback hopefully about what uh, people are needing and wanting out of, out of a community's interaction. But a couple of the things that we know we're going to be adding in the, in the relative short term are upvoting of posts and comments, which is um, to be released shortly. Um, so that would give you a, a upvote button here likes, whatever, I think upvote will be your, your high low paradigm. I'm sorry, your community's paradigm within this, this world. Um, and then there will be the ability to send Holofuel to another, another uh, community's user uh, in, with interaction with the Holofuel DNA uh, also shortly. Um, so those two things I, I think we're fairly, fairly sure we will be pushing out and then from there it'll be iterating with the community as to what, what makes most sense. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of features the, the community uh, requests and suggests for us. So, um, all right, well, thank you, Lauren. Um, this, for me, this is a really exciting application. Um, this really shows off a migration of an existing application from a client server, a very traditional application development infrastructure, um, and bringing it into the Holochain distributed application space. Um, the possibilities this, this opens up for a lot of other applications that exist as client server right now uh, to become fully distributed by simply migrating away from those databases on the back end to this kind of peer interactive managed uh, storage of data and management of data uh, is really exciting. Anything that, that kind of came up for you yeah, I think one of the more interesting pieces that came out of that, uh, or has came true so far, has been um, just just how relatively natural it is to take a UI application, in this case in React, um, and to be able to speak to multiple different peer-based data sources, and, and in this case, very importantly, Holochain, um, through a sort of unified GraphQL layer, giving giving a, a you could say stitched or federated uh, interface across multiple different data sources. So this in this particular case, we're speaking purely to, to Holochain DNAs. You could still, in the course of migrating, be still speaking to a centralized server in addition to speaking to peers. Um, as we were adapting this, we did actually have at one point some features still running off of the the centralized server and database and some features on Holochain, um, which is an entirely viable model for migration into a distributed application. Um, I think those, those cases are really exciting um, as the Holochain ecosystem matures and we start to move off of uh, centralized services. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and uh, I just wanna reiterate as we wrap up um, that uh, we are in need of more folks to use and test uh, this with thousands of users interacting simultaneously and providing us with feedback and bug reports. Excellent. Lauren, thank you. And uh, thank you to all out there uh, for taking a look. Thank you, Jamison. Bye.